Okay, guys, let's see if we can do a demo of WDS install. Now, we did this in class, but we don't. We can only go so far. And here, my server is a little more full-featured. I have ADDS set up, and it is a domain controller. And I have DHCP and DNS both set up and running on this. So this is going to give us a little more capability and we can do a more full-featured demo than we could technically do in class. So I'm going to start out the way we did in class. We're going to manage uh, add roles and features and we are going to select the WDS role. So here's my Windows Deployment Services we're going to go ahead and install it the same way we did in class. We're going to do the same role services and we'll let it go. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video for a minute while it does the install so we just don't have to sit here and have you know dead time while we wait for it. So once the install finishes uh, I'll pick it back up and we'll continue with our demo. Okay, so our installation is completed. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And WDS is now installed on my system, and I see it over here. Um, my notification here says WDS installation is finished. So I'm going to close that. And then I'm going to go to Tools, and I'm going to open up Windows Deployment Services and start configuring it. So I'm going to go to, let me just maximize this, go to my servers. And we're actually having a problem with servers coming up. Let's try to add a server and we're going to do the local computer. And it says, there we go. All right. Just needed to give it a little prompting there. Um, Windows servers is not configured, so we're going to right click and configure server. Now, this server is a member of an Active Directory domain. It is, or, dom well, it's not a member, it's a domain controller. Uh, so we can use Active Directory mode. We do have DHCP server on the network, so that's all set. And there is an Active DNS server on my network. So unlike in class, we actually have all of these set and ready to go. So I'm going to click Next, and this is going to be integrated with Active Directory. So we'll click Next. See remote install, that's fine. We're going to put it at the same place. And then, yes, we understand the warning. Okay, now for this, now because we've got a DHCP server installed, we want to go ahead and configure this. So if the dynamic host configuration protocol is running on this server, check both of the following check boxes and use DHCP tools to add appropriate PXE options. Okay, fine. We are, we, so we uh, do want to set it to not listen on DHCP and configure options. So, click Next. Uh, I want to leave it at do not respond to any client computers for the moment. We're going to come back and we're going to fix that once we finish the rest of our deployment and get things ready to go. So, we'll click Next and then finish our configuration. Now, this should take just a couple of minutes to copy over the files needed for Windows deployment. But again, rather than send, uh, having you hang out here and wait, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and then we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so our configuration is complete, so we're going to click Finish, and that should reset. Now, this is currently not responding, so it's showing it stopped. We want to add some install and some boot images. So I am going to, my system is running a little bit slowly here, I double click on boot images and it actually gives me one. So my Windows XP setup and let me go to my install images and I have nothing there. Now the reason it gives me one is because I've been playing with this a little bit before. So we'll add an install image. So I'm going to right click and add install image. Image group 1, I'm actually going to call this, we're going to use the Windows Server 2016. So I'm going to add that as my group. Next, and then I'm going to find my location. So browse. And because I've used this server before, it actually remember the last place I browsed to, which was in my DVD drive and then my sources folder. I'm going to find my install.wim and hit open. Next, 
and I get to choose which of these I want to make available and I'm gonna go ahead and you'll see we have standard and core and data center so I'm gonna uncheck three of these and I'm just gonna do the Windows Server 2016 standard is an available image. So next and next and now we're gonna add the Windows image and this is gonna take a little while as well so we might as well pause and we will pick it up when the uh, image has been fully copied over. Okay so our image has been added let's go ahead and click finish and now we should see in our install images, we should see our Windows Server 2016 boot images. We should have a boot image there. We haven't actually act <laughs> excuse me, we haven't actually activated it to uh, serve any clients yet, but at this point, other than preparing it to serve, WDS should be all set up. Let's go ahead and we'll right click on our server, we'll go to properties. And here is our configuration, PXE response. Let's go ahead and set it to respond to all client computers, known and unknown. And you'll notice we have a bunch of other settings here. Uh, general settings are PXE response, ADDS, uh, client naming policies, computer account location when we're creating new computers, uh, boot options, default boot images. So you see a lot of configuration that we can do here. Um, so anything you set, we can come back and reset later just under the properties. So if you mess something up in your configuration, don't worry about it. It's easy enough to fix. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click apply and OK. And we should be just about set for, um, for deploying Windows Server 2016 using WDS.